Yeah, this is a heart-wrenching story. A five-year-old is fighting for his life at the Dorangiza Hospital in Nelson Mandela Bay. He was apparently locked in a classroom for three days during the coldest weekend in the Eastern Cape. The boy was reported missing on Friday and only discovered on Monday when school reopened. Eastern Cape Education is probing the incident. And to tell us more, we have the depart department spokesperson, Vuyisele Mbokela. Good morning to you, ma'am, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, just uh, let us know about the condition of the boy before we get into the details of the incident. Uh, thank you very much, Cindy. Good, good morning to the viewers of NCNA. Um, the condition of the boy uh, yesterday when I we talked with the district director, it was reported to be a bit critical and was receiving attention uh, indeed in Doranginza. And um, the last call we received, it was around about uh, nine yesterday, where it was still confirmed that uh, he is being uh, given a great care by the health professionals. And uh, we are expecting that at least uh, before uh, nine o'clock today, the district director again will interface with the head of the department to give an update and also to give a formal report because of, as of now, um, we're not uh, having a full report which says this is what uh, actually happening uh, or this is what actually happened uh, because the investigation was uh, at the school yesterday and uh, there was uh, also uh, more attention given to the boy that was in hospital. So at least today uh, we're expecting to get a full report and also um, the MEC will indicate uh, after would have rearranged the diary uh, when is he going to visit that boy and also that All family. Right. I I'm just going to have to interrupt you right there. So there's a five-year-old boy who was stuck in a classroom as of Friday and was only discovered, so it's the entire weekend, discovered on Monday morning over the coldest weekend in the region. And here we are discussing diaries and you know who's available uh, to get to a meeting. Is there a lack of urgency on, on your side, ma'am? Or where, where is the ne negligence um, in, in dealing with this matter? For me, it's, it's quite serious. Uh, it's one boy too many. How do you lock up a five-year-old over the weekend? There, there must be some accountability there. Definitely, uh, Cindy, there will be accountability. Uh, the point now is to firstly make sure that as the boy is being attended in hospital, um, there's a certainty that he, uh, he's alive. That's the first point. Secondly, uh, I've already indicated that uh, um, the HOD uh, has been given, getting a, a report, but the report that he was being given uh, yesterday, it was a, a, a verbal report from the district director because it was through a call. Uh, today, expectation is that the report must be written so that from that report, there's a, a way to draw consequence management uh, because there are two things that need to be established on this incident is one, was this a uh, locking of this uh, a little boy inside that classroom deliberately, or it was a mistake? And if it was a mistake, uh, is it a mistake that which suffice to say uh, there must be a person that is given a process of a DC? Uh, because um, the question could also be, uh, who is responsible for the uh, for that grade R class? Uh, is that person supposed to be teaching grade R? Uh, in the first place because you understand that in our own schools we also do have people that we call non-teaching staff in the form of EAs. So those are some of the questions that are going to be there. And on the side of the MEC is that uh, you would understand that there are some uh, obligatory meetings like a standing committee and like a public um, um, uh, accounting uh, meetings. So those are some just uh, meetings to, to, to check when is he available? Is, is he going to be available? And I can tell it could be even maybe uh, after uh, working hours. Yes, so it's a matter of uh, just uh, again, just in the interest uh, of time, we, we, we just want to try and get the details as much as possible. Have you had any contact with the family of the boy? Because I can just imagine the sheer yeah. horror uh, of having your child missing over the weekend, not knowing where they are, and here they are in the meantime stuck in a classroom. Have you had contact with these uh, his parents and? and what has been their reaction? 
Yes, um, the district director was directly in contact with that uh, family. And also the psychosocial support is going to be provided because uh, we can just all know that uh, the family would have been terrified, uh, especially the parents. Uh, so the district director was in contact with that family and also was also in contact with the, the health practitioners that are busy handling the boy in Dorangins. And the, as of today, we're, during the course of the day, we're going to inform the public through a statement to say this is what is going to be happening. This is the day or the time that the MEC will be visiting them. But in terms of phone calls, there are those phone calls that are taking place between uh, the family, the district director and also the HOD. And ma'am, what do you think is the recourse for the family while you satisfy your internal processes uh, with the various meetings to get to the bottom of it? What, what right and recourse does the family have? Can they sue the uh, Eastern Cape Education Department? How are you going to make it uh, right by them? Um, the time uh, will permit uh, and the, the, the visit of the MSC is the one that will make an indication uh, on whether the family uh, feels that they need to uh, sue the department and also um, it will be a decision that is taken by that family. But from where we're seated, uh, we believe that uh, there is a great uh, need to make that family feel that uh, there's a care that will come from government and also there's a support that they are going to get. Um, and if this is in a, a pure negligence, um, the department will humble itself before that, that, that family. And if it's inten intentionally, uh, the department will hold uh, any of, the, uh, of those that would have been uh, responsible. But if what is the next step uh, from that side of the family, it will be them that defines. But from where we're seated, um, we, are don't, we are not thinking um, it's a point that which we can quickly jump to, because for now, we are desperately wanting to get that boy out of the hospital uh, so that he can be in the care of his family. And then if what then happens, it will be uh, defined by the relations that will be uh, shown by the visit of the MSC to that particular family. Yeah, and have you had any reaction from other parents who might have concerns that this too could potentially ha happen to them, a negligence or, you know, your child disappearing over a weekend? Um, what you know is that uh, the searching of that boy was done uh, greatly by the community itself. Uh, and also the involvement of the uh, South African Police Service. It therefore tells you that that community uh, in that particular school, uh, it was also frustrated and uh, they were also terrified. And I am believing that uh, the district director will call a, 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 a meeting of parents in that particular school, so to allay their fears and also to explain what happened and also to explain what will be the process of government uh, moving forward. And we do understand that um, just humanly, every parent will be frustrated when there is one kid that is missing. And uh, it is in that uh, instance that I believe that there will be a community, there will be a meeting of the school that will be called with all the parents, especially those who've got kids that are studying in that school doing great art. We certainly have him in our prayers, uh, taking comfort that, uh, albeit he's in a critical condition, but as you were saying, uh, he's out of the woods. So we're going to have to leave it there, ma'am. Thank you very much for your time. That is Vuiseka Mbokela, the Eastern Cape Department of Education spokesperson.